tener en este auditorio a Tonia Horley, que viene por cuarta vez a la Feria Internacional del Libro de Guadalajara. Muchas gracias, Tonia. Y desde luego también estamos encantados de tener a, a Chasca, José Ignacio Valenzuela, para presentar el, el libro de el, el, el que cierra la saga ya de, de Bless. Eh, Halloween, entonces pues encantados, muchas gracias en nombre de Penguin Random House y del Sey Alfaguara eh, recuerden que tenemos transmisión en vivo y que pueden recurrir a ella en todo momento después, eh, me gusta leer en la fil.com, gracias ah perdón, tenemos una firma al término de este, de este encuentro en el stand principal de Penguin Random House de una a dos, gracias Thank you. Bueno, primero que todo, ¿cómo están? Me, emociona, me imagino que emocionadísimos todos de estar aquí, ¿no es cierto? Yo quiero decir que probablemente debo ser el más emocionado de todos porque soy fan de Tonia. La conozco hace muchos años, la admiro muchísimo y cuando me propusieron estar aquí sentado hoy a su lado, yo antes de que me hubieran terminado de preguntar de la, la idea, yo ya había dicho que sí inmediatamente. Y para hoy tengo pensado una conversación que espero que nos alcance el tiempo para abarcar dos cosas. Uno, la creación de la trilogía, The Bless. Y segundo, conocerla un poco más a ella, como ser humano, como escritora, como creadora, como artista. Gracias. Yes. Sí, yes. sounds good. ¿Sounds good? Sí. Yeah. Ok, vamos so, <risa> Tonia, la primera pregunta que tengo es, antes de comenzar a escribir The Blessed, ¿tú sabías que esto iba a ser una trilogía o era solo un libro que se terminó extendiendo? Sí, yeah, I, I had it planned out from the very beginning. Um, I got the idea when I was in Mexico last um, time, because I like to visit churches and um, visit... Um, lots of things in Mexico. In fact, every time I go home, I write something for the Huffington Post about the culture here and, and, and the amazing art that I see. Um, so I got the idea here. I, I wanted um, three, three girls, three martyrs, and one girl for each trilogy. So um, since these books are really about fame, um, I picked Cecilia, the patron saint of music, because she, she's bringing her into the modern day and the music industry. And that's kind of, um, that's kind of what I, um, the, the path that my life took when I moved to New York City. I was a musician. And then Lucy, um, the it girl, uh, all the fame, and that came from my publicity background um, and how people are, people think that famous people are, have, it, have it all and have it all together and they want to be them. But in actuality, they're, searching for themselves, they're on a quest, and, um, and very lonely, I've <laughs> learned at times. And then Agnes, because she is uh, the patron saint of young love. Por, por eso, el, uh, los amores jóvenes. <laughs> <laughs> Ahora, Tonia, dime una cosa, ¿por qué unir religión, que es algo tan personal, e incluso que puede generar tantas divisiones en el mundo? y tantas muertes en el mundo, ¿por qué unir religión a literatura? Uh, these aren't religious books. Um, I love religious art, and I also love martyr stories because they are brutal, and you cannot make things like that up these days. And so I wanted three, I wanted, I wanted to use religion, but I wanted to turn it around a little bit to having faith in yourself not in something else, and to, um, for, so that readers could um, believe that they had the power to save themselves. They didn't need someone else to save them. So it, it's really a religion of yourself and trying to write that in the stories. Pero, sí, y se, mm -hmm. a usted me imagino que ya leyeron los tres libros, y se darán cuenta que efectivamente una de las, las grandes líneas del libro es precisamente Cree en ti mismo. Aprende a creer en ti mismo y cuando tengas ese convencimiento y, te, y, con, y descubras que, que tu Dios está dentro tuyo, vas a poder trascender y vas a poder conseguir finalmente lo que quieres. Me parece que eso es lo más atractivo que tiene el libro para mí, al menos. Por lo menos yo lo leí 
desde esa orilla. Ahora, cuéntame, yo, yo me imagino que es por tu background también, pero cuéntame por qué la imagen para ti es tan importante. No solamente la imagen visual de los libros, que estarán de acuerdo conmigo que es absolutamente espectacular, pero no solamente la imagen física del libro, sino que también las imágenes que tú creas. Cuando uno lee tus libros, tiene la sensación de estar viendo una película. ¿Por qué para ti es tan importante la imagen como medio de contar una historia? Uh, I'm, I'm a very visual um, thinker, so that is why I like to pick the art for my books, and I'm so, so grateful to my publisher for, um, for these three beautiful covers, because this is, these were my dream covers, and it didn't happen that way in the U.S., and it happened here, and that is why I love, love this country even more, <laughs> um, because I don't have the English or British editions in my office, I have I have the Mexican editions uh, because I just I think they're art and I love them. But um, yeah, I'm just a visual thinker and I, I I write almost almost like seeing a film, almost like you're seeing a film because that's what I'm interested in. And I also make my own trailers, book trailers, and things like that because I love film. I studied film. So. Y esto se ha aplicado siempre a toda tu escritura. ¿Siempre comienzas de alguna manera desde una imagen, a partir de una imagen? Sí, yeah, usually go searching for art first. And, and actually, the Ghost Girl book I wrote um, as a feature film first, before it was a book. And it was auctioned by uh, Robert De Niro's company. And it, you know, was sitting there, sitting there. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I don't want, I can't give this up. And I was just determined as Charlotte Usher. So, to see this the story come to life so that's when i decided to try my hand at writing books and so and it will be a movie it's going to be shooting this spring fabuloso yeah. felicitaciones <laughs> um, so y vamos a ver vamos a ver una película de the blessed vamos a ver tres películas I would like to see The Blessed on TV. I, in, in television. It was optioned briefly by Jennifer Lopez, and she was a fan of the books. And, um, but, you know, things didn't work out quite well in, on the business side. So I'm now just writing, writing a TV pilot, just on spec. <laughs> y se puede saber. They would be really great on television. Y se puede saber sobre qué es este spec, este, este piloto de televisión que estás escribiendo. Tiene que ver con tus temas favoritos. Um, yeah, it's 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 just I just feel like these three characters are. I, I really spent a lot of time developing them, and I hope that they're three dimensional and and real to people and. Um, So I'd like to see them live, uh, continue to live uh, uh, beyond this trilogy. Hacerlas de verdad, hacerlas de tres dimensiones completas. Mm -hmm. Ahora, ya que estamos hablando un poco de televisión y de cine, me gustaría saber cuáles son tus películas favoritas, mm -hmm. Sonia. Cuando tienes ganas de quedarte en tu casa, sentarte frente al televisor, sacar un <laughs> bote de helado y... <laughs> Dedicarte yeah. a... I don't like ice cream. A, no, yo hey, también, hey. yo también, por eso lo dije. Hey. ¿Qué, ¿Qué te gusta ver? ¿Qué te gusta? ¿O cuál es esa película a la que siempre vuelves? I like uh, independent films. Um, I like uh, Harold and Maude. And um, I, I, I really love movies. I see lots of movies. So I, I watch a lot of movies, even if I don't like the movie, just to see, what, <laughs> just to see what's happening. But... Um, I'm a big fan of the people making the Ghost Girl film, so I'm really lucky that um, Matthew Vaughn, who's making it, made X-Men First Class and um, Kiss Kick-Ass and Kingsman and, um, and the writer, um, Honey Ross, she's the screenwriter, her mother, Jane Goldman, wrote Miss Peregrine and um, wow. Kick-Ass and, and Stardust and a whole bunch of films that I love. So, This whole and and the director is um, Dexter Fletcher, who I'm also a fan of. So I'm really happy that it's in this Matthew Vaughn kind of family and that he's bringing it all to life. So I wa I watch all those films of the people that are making the Ghost Girl film too. So um, so that's a blessing, I think. Y libros favoritos que siempre estén en tu mesita de noche junto a tu cama 
y de los que no te puedas separar? ¿Hay algún libro o yeah. un par de libros a los que siempre vuelvas? Um, I love Perry by Stephen King. I love um, The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I love um, I, my recent, uh, my favorite book recently is A Monster Calls. I think that's a, a brilliant, masterfully yes. written book. Yes. Yes. But yeah, I have books everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> y sabemos que, porque me, lo has dicho públicamente muchísimas veces y porque lo has demostrado también viniendo a este país muchísimo, sabemos que amas México y que para ti el imaginario mexicano, sobre todo el que tiene que ver con la muerte, cómo se vive en México la muerte, es algo que te ha gustado muchísimo. Independientemente de México, ¿qué otros países también te gustan o visitas habitualmente mm -hmm. o te gustaría seguir visitando en el futuro? What other countries? Other countries, yes. Um, I'm supposed to be going to Prague this, um, this uh, summer. So I've never been to Prague and I'm pretty excited about that. Precioso. And I just got back from Vienna, which was really cool. And But Mexico is my creative home, I believe. I, I really, I love it here. And it, there's nothing like it for me. So I, I joke that I was Mexican in another life. Yo digo lo mismo. You know, I just got that, um, where you send away the swab sí, in your mouth to sí. see what your DNA is and what countries you come from. Sí. And I, I am, uh, I have Spanish blood in me, so I just found that out. I never knew. Pues espero que en tu próxima vida seas mexicana. There is something to that. Yo espero, espero, <laughs> yo, yo también espero ser mexicano también en mi próxima vida. Y More comer... Spanish blood than Irish blood, which I was very shocked by, because my last name, I was told I was Italian and Irish my whole life. And I'm barely Irish, I'm more Spanish than Irish, so. El mundo, el mundo es mucho más chico de lo que uno cree, muchísimo más chico. Me imagino que todos los que están acá han leído no solamente la saga de Bless, que es espléndida, y si no la han leído, salgan de este salón inmediatamente avergonzados, porque es maravillosa y recomendadísima. Pero también me imagino que habrán leído la saga de Ghost Girl, que es deliciosa. Uh. Mi pregunta es, Tonia... ¿En qué libro, en cuál de tus libros te gustaría vivir? Oh, wow. I don't know. I mean, I, none of my main characters live, so. Bueno, reformulo. Sonia, ¿en cuál de tus libros te gustaría, like te gustaría oh. estar? Um, I don't know. I mean, that's a really hard question. I, Charlotte Usher is such a big part of me, and it's a much funner place to, <laughs> to exist. And the Blessed is pretty brutal, but it's also, um, I think, more mature and, uh, I don't know, more exciting maybe, I guess, more... En el acción, thrilling? Más acción. Yeah, <laughs> more action, yeah. <laughs> Es una, es una pregunta que siempre me gusta hacer a los escritores, porque por lo general la respuesta es esa, eh, no sé, me gusta más mi escritorio en mi casa. Y yo creo que tiene que ver con el hecho de que muchas veces los escritores, sobre todo escritores tan talentosos como Tonia, escriben sobre las cosas que no pueden vivir, o las cosas que a lo mejor les gustaría vivir pero no se atreven a vivir, o las cosas que les seducen pero que por alguna razón no son capaces de conseguir en la vida. Y me parece muy atractivo siempre establecer cuál es el mundo de los autores versus el mundo de los que ellos crean. Por lo mismo, ¿cómo es tu mundo en la vida real? ¿Cómo es el mundo en el que te mueves? I live in Brooklyn in New York City and I um it's a very kind of gritty place and I run a museum with my twin sister, the Morbid Anatomy Museum and uh and I write books. And I try to do everything I can. I try to travel. I feel like, you know, as a writer, you have to experience many things, whether they're comfortable or uncomfortable and painful or not painful. And so I, I seek those experiences so that I can put them in my books. ¿Y tú crees que escribirías lo mismo que escribes si no vivieras en Brooklyn? Mm, I know that's hard to say. I don't know. I... I I think I think that you're changed by uh, you're changed by everything around you, and uh, yeah, I probably I would think I don't know. 
¿Sí? Ahora, yo cuando me invitaron a participar de ese evento me puse a investigar y me puse a leer entrevistas y me puse a ver los videitos y me puse a leer los libros que me faltaban por leer y hay un titular de entrevista que se repite muchísimo cuando tú das entrevista y es que tú eres una escritora que entiende muy bien a las mujeres. Oh, yeah. oh. Lo he leído mucho eso. Y es cierto, si uno ha leído la obra de Tonia, se da cuenta que las dueñas de las historias siempre son mujeres. Y son mujeres muy particulares. Tan particulares que algunas están muertas. Tan particulares que otras son santas. Eh, pero son mujeres muy particulares. I kill women. ¿Cómo te llevas tú con otras mujeres? ¿Y por qué la mujer siempre es la protagonista de tus historias? Well, I, I, I don't think I could really write women unless I love them so much, and I am a woman. So, um, and I, I, I've seen, I've been shut out of things in this business because I, I was a woman early on, and because Hollywood was such a boys' club, and it was a struggle to make it. Um, For me in, in certain areas um, in my profession and so I really try to encourage women to kick ass and be badass and believe in themselves and you know with these martyrs um, I went back and read the original martyr stories of Agnes Lucy and Cecilia and they're seen as passive characters um, but they are they are they were young girls who they were willing to die for what they believed in and they were very strong and i said wow this might be the first example of feminism these ancient martyr tales that we have even and 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 also the first examples of young adult because they are young women and these tales have lasted through centuries so um yeah i just i'm fascinated by really strong women i think one of my favorite movies is kill bill by quentin Tarantino. wow and that's because he put a woman in that role and 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 that's kind of what I try to do with the Blessed. I tried to write really strong women who were very flawed and because um, they're saints, not angels. So they, they really are struggling in their lives and down on their luck, but they find that there's something extraordinary inside them. Y, gracias. Yo sé que, me imagino que muchos deben tener preguntas, comentarios, querrán entrevistar de primera mano a la autora. Tal vez este sea el momento, antes que se nos acabe el tiempo, de que empiecen a levantar las manos. Ah, ok, qué rapidez. Ok. ¿Quieres una pista? Sí. Creo que tomaste una foto, ¿verdad? En frente de... Sí, yo reposté eso en todas mis redes sociales. Me encanta esa foto. Ahí viene el micrófono. Mi pregunta es si hay algo que desearías cambiar del plot de cualquiera de tus libros o si te arrepentiste de, no sé, como matar a algún personaje. Yeah. <risa> um, <risa> you know, I always would go back and rewrite stuff and that's why I like to carry things over to film and television because I, I think as a writer you're kind of a perfectionist and you go back and think about different things, but I'm, I'm comfortable the way things worked out. And um, it was, you know, it was tough to get to know these characters so well and then have them go out in the way they did. But they went out on their own terms. And it, this is all about really fame. And it seems like in our society, after you pass away, after you shed your mortal, mortal coil, you uh, become more powerful. And that's what the whole whole idea of saints are, and 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 we tend to mythologize the dead and how great they were, and we don't see their flaws. And so, and and also, when I went back and learned about these martyr tales, I learned that saints have superpowers, and which I didn't know. Um, they can levitate, and they can bilocate. They can be in two places at once, and they they're clairvoyant. They can read minds. So they're our first superheroes too. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yo, yo tengo una pregunta. Perdón, me voy a aprovechar de que estoy aquí arriba. Si tú fueras santa, ¿qué tipo de santa serías? 
¿Y cuál sería tu superpoder? Yo también quiero ser santo, por eso te pregunto. So Pero ya no me resultó. Claro. You guys have to get my back here. Um, I don't know what saint I'd want to be. I mean, I, I'd want to be, I don't know, maybe Lucy. Sí. Yeah, because she was so, she, she gouged her own eyes out to be less attractive to uh -huh. men. You cannot get more feminist than that and more badass than that. I would never do that, but I wish I had her chutzpah. That's you, a Jewish word. I'm not Jewish. Y un superpoder? Como, como santa, ¿qué superpoder te gustaría tener? Levitar, estar en dos lugares, incendiar cosas. Yeah, I, I would love to have all the powers. And I would, I'd love to, like, yeah, why not? Why right? not, claro. You're a saint. Do it all, yeah. I'd love to levitate and catch, and, and have things catch on fire with my, <laughs> my glance. Let's see if it works. No, it's not working. <laughs> A ver, otra pregunta. ¿Cuál es tu comida mexicana favorita? Um, well, I love, you know, bread of the dead. I, I, the, the, the last, uh, yeah, pan de muerto. Pan de muerto. Sí. Uh, pan de muertos. The last time I was in Guadalajara two years ago. Um, I, I got it with the cheese in it, the pastry cheese or whatever, the sweet, what's it called? I don't know, sweet cheese. And my sister stole it from me and, <laughs> while I was doing an interview. So she didn't come this time. <laughs> But that's my favorite. Oh, I could eat that with coffee. <sighs> Tacos al pastor, no, no te gustan? Uh, yeah, ¿Sí? of course. <laughs> The, the, the bread is dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Buenas tardes. Yo aquí. Hi. Es un honor estar con ustedes. Muchas gracias. Eh, lo somos Thank los dos y no sé para quién será mi pregunta. Espero que los dos respondan. ¿Qué les recomiendan a los escritores en formación a los nuevos? <laughs> No, you take it. Yo, take it. No, you take it. Pero después tú. Ok, ok. A ver, esa es una pregunta que siempre uno escucha en muchas partes. ¿Qué hago si me gusta escribir? ¿Por dónde empiezo? Eh, mi consejo siempre es sal del closet, muestra lo que escribes. No lo dejes guardado. Me parece que la mejor manera de empezar a escribir es empezar a asumir que ese texto necesita ojos para estar completo. Lo segundo es no, es no asumir que si a alguien no le gusta lo que tú escribes, te tienes que molestar o ofender o sentir triste. El texto no eres tú. El texto es algo que tú escribiste. Y tienes que tener la capacidad siempre de separar el texto de tus sentimientos. Y lo otro es que hoy día todos ustedes tienen una gran ventaja frente a los que somos un poquito más grandes, que es que existe el Internet. Y hoy en día hay blogs, hay tablones de expresión, hay comunidades en línea donde se puede publicar con solo apretar un botón. Y esa es una gran manera también de empezar a mostrarse. Me parece que así es como hay que empezar hoy en día. Y concursar, por supuesto. Participar en muchos concursos, porque probablemente, si eres buena, en algún momento te lo vas a ganar. Gracias. Yeah, and also um, in terms of like rejection and criticism, I mean, you can listen, make sure you trust the person that's, that's, you know, analyzing your work, first of all. But also that doesn't mean that you're wrong and your writing's wrong. It's your voice. There's no wrong or right. And um, there's no, is, am I doing this right? Is this good? If you think it's good and you believe in it, eventually others will believe in it too. So just trust yourself, trust your voice. I've, Ghost Girl was rejected so many times before it was published. I was told that, oh, well, we'd love to have this book, we'd love to make it a movie, but she, you know, she can't die. And I was like, well, that's the story, you know? And so you need to believe in it, you need to stick to it and, and you know, believe yourself, believe in yourself. Thank you.
Uh, buenas tardes, este, mi pregunta es, de todos los personajes que has escrito en los diferentes libros que tienes, ¿con cuál crees que tiene más de ti? O sea, todos, tienen, todos los personajes tienen de ti, pero ¿con cuál te sientes más identificado, como tu favorito? Uh -huh. Uh, I have, probably have to pick two, and that would be, well, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I, I would think Scarlet and um, from Ghost Girl and then Cecilia from The Blessed. Yeah. ¿Y por qué Scarlet? She's just a rebel, and she doesn't listen to anybody, and she, um, she lives her life on her own terms, and that's what I did in high school, and yeah. <laughs> Yo quiero escribir un libro que la protagonista sea Tonia. Me encanta. You don't want that, no. I, trust me, I, I do want you can't that. Print what I live. A ver, otra pregunta. Aprovechen. Yeah. Hi. Es el, el micrófono rebelde. Hola, este, es un honor estar aquí con ustedes, la verdad, creo que todos las amamos mucho. Gracias. Uh, mi pregunta es, todos los libros son parte de usted, son muy importantes para usted. ¿Qué sintió, cómo se sintió cuando terminó esta saga la, de The Blazer? ¿Cómo se sintió? Um, I felt satisfied when I finished The Blessed. I, I was sad, you know, to see these characters go through what they went through, but um, I think when you create the, really, I, I don't really write books back to back, I don't churn out books, I'm not that kind of writer, I, I, I can't do that, that's not the way my brain works, so I spend lots of time with my characters, and it takes, the, the book I'm writing now, Feathervane, which will be out in 2018, I've been writing for a few years already. So the main character, her name is Ren, Ren Grayson. I've been spending lots of time with her. And so I, I really want people to, to love the characters, to be able to relate to the characters and, you know, get sad when they're sad and happy when they're happy and really feel what they're feeling. So, um, yeah, it was, it was sad to see them go, but the way they went, I was like, yeah. <laughs> they they did it. They did it on their own terms, and they were strong. They are strong, strong women. So, Tony, happy una, to have these books in the world. Y una pregunta: ¿Cuánto tiempo te tomó escribir los tres libros? Y quiero saber también si, porque parecería que es así, si hiciste mucha investigación para poder escribirlo. I didn't do, I didn't, I, I have a tendency to over research, so I tried not to do that. You get lost, right? Oh, and supuesto. <laughs> you find yourself in these black holes on Google. But, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I research a lot of the art. I found this artist in Lithuania, and that kind of kicked off the whole thing, Natalie Shaw. And, uh, and I researched some martyr tales. I found the three that I thought represented what I wanted to say in the story. And, um, I spent a few few years really thinking about this book. It was the last two years. It was the last time I was in Mexico that I started writing it. So, okay. Yeah. That, that not not the, not two years ago, but the time before that. Sorry. A ver. Yes. Cool hair. <laughs> you you with the cool hair? Yeah. You. Yep. No, right there. Her. Or, yeah, with the black and white leggings. Mm -hmm. Bueno, primero que nada, eh, hola a todas. Me imagino que todas estamos aquí emocionadas por ay, tener a nuestra autora favorita. Not as thrilled as, as I am. <laughs> es un honor para todas. Thank eh, you. Mi pregunta es, um, ¿por qué um, tenía que ser no sé, se tenía que morir de esa manera así, Charlotte. Spoilers, eh, spoilers. Eh, no estamos hablando así como un final, obviamente ah. no es el final, sino que ¿por qué tiene que ser yeah, con un no, bocito de goma? Es, 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 es. ¿Por qué no atragantada por una galleta? <risa> o por un pan de muerto. Sí, es, you es know. o pan de muerto. Um, you know, I want, she was a choker in life, she didn't go after what she wanted, so I knew I wanted her to choke. Um, 
do you say that here? Do you call people chokers? Yeah, so, um, and I wanted to pick the cutest little piece of candy that I could make a murderer, so I thought a gummy bear, and I, I like the way the gummy bears look. After you suck on them a little bit and they get really like, they look like gems. So I thought that was a good visual to have the gummy bear staring back at her when she's dying. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a Kit Kat. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. That girl. ¿Has pensado en crear un protagonista que sea hombre o mexicano? Pero protagonista, protagonista. Yeah, I thought about it. I, I would love to do that. Um, when I wrote the Day of the Dead book uh, for you know, the Ghost Girl Day of the Dead book. I really, like, I really, my publisher was so amazing. They let me go visit the lakes and do the whole Day of the Dead thing. And it was, I just got to immerse myself in that, in the culture, the tradition. And I took many photos and published them on the Huffington Post. And um, I love, I would love to write um, a Mexican character. I'd love to do more books here. I really would. Thank you. Yes? Mm -hmm. Hola. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> eh, quería preguntarte que si antes de escribir los libros, este, a lo mejor todos tu, tenemos ese afán, a lo mejor de a, eh, empezar a firmar nuestros cuadernos diciendo, cuando sea famoso así voy a firmar mi, mi disco o mis libros. ¿Alguna vez, este, antes de escribir los libros o hacerte tan uh, famosa, uh, estuviste <laughs> ensayando? Yeah, but I thought, I thought I was going to be like David Bowie, like a rock star. <laughs> I thought I'd be Debbie Harry. You are a rock star. Yeah. <laughs> I, I work for rock stars, but I, yeah, I know, I, you know, when you're young, I had a Kiss drum set, you know, and I thought I'd be in Kiss. Uh, but yeah, I did do that. I think we all do that, right? I think that's healthy. Nunca hice For self esteem, you didn't do no, this? No, nunca. <gasps> okay, no, okay, me voy, no me voy. No. <laughs> no. Thank you. <laughs> it's like singing in the mirror with a, with a brush. Nunca. It's a microphone. <laughs> yes? Okay. Hola, Tonia. Hi. Mucho. Ay, mucho. Ah, oh, thank you. Bueno, mi pregunta es sobre eh, tu religión. O sea, me contradice yes. mucho eso de que tengas tu fe, que creas en ti, pero ¿cuál es tu fe? ¿Cuál mm -hmm. es tu fe? Esa duda existencial que tengo. You know, I, I think that's such a hard question to answer because I was raised Catholic. Um, I went to church every week with my grandparents, um, but I think what, I'm, I'm a faithful person, I think I'm a spiritual person, but I don't, I'm not a practicing, I don't practice any religion, any organized religion per se, um, but the thing that really struck me when I was young and going to church, which I think started my whole storytelling process, were, you know, the, the statues and the relics in church, and it was terrifying as a kid to see you know, a saint stepping on a snake, and it was, uh, and, and learn about revelations, and the apocalypse, and the end of the world, and um, it was terrifying, and so I was like, wow, these are like horror stories, and, uh, <laughs> and so I think that's what got me into, into writing, um, hearing the stories generated, and you know, in the church world, so anyway, that answers your question. Tony, ¿te puedo hacer una pregunta? Ahora que mencionas esto, que ibas al, a la iglesia con tus abuelos, etc. Uh -huh. ¿Cómo eras como niña? Y después, ¿cómo fuiste como adolescente? Oh, teenage years. <laughs> lo sé, lo sé. Um, I'm a twin, and uh, I, was, I was always, my, my sister was very shy, and I was always the one that went out and, you know, did all the wrangling and the socializing. <laughs> um, but in high school, I mean, I just completely, 
I was popular. Um, I rebelled. I, I had purple hair. I had, you know, I was in a punk band. I, I, you know, was on the road. I would, you know, steal cars and, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't recommend that. Um, but you know, I was, I was like, I was really punk, and there was nobody doing that in my small town. So I thought, wow, I'm gonna really shake shit up here. You know, it's gonna be, they're gonna hate me, and they're gonna, I'm gonna get all this. You know, I wanted to be that punk rebel, and it made me more popular. So it backfired on me. That whole plan. <laughs> y, y, ahora, y fuiste famosa siendo la que fuiste y eres hoy aún más famosa siendo la adulta en la que te convertiste. ¿Cómo manejas con la, el tema de la fama? Porque cuando uno lee The Blessed, uno se da cuenta que aquí el gran tema central es la fama y lo que la fama provoca en los seres humanos, en los que la están sufriendo y en los que la están admirando. ¿Cómo manejas tú el tema de la fama? Porque tú cuentas así, así ella cuenta, sí, porque Jennifer López le encantó mi libro y entonces este otro va a hacer la película. Y eso es manejar, es manejar la fama desde un lugar muy interesante. Pero ¿cómo tú vives la fama? But you know, you're, you spend most of your time in your pajamas by yourself at home writing. Yes. That's, you know, that's the rock star life we live, right? <laughs> I mean, if you don't focus on your work and you focus on these other things, there's not going to be anything, you know, for, there's not going to be any substance. There's not going to be anything. So I don't, I don't focus on if my books are a success. I, I, I write the best books that I want to write and that I think are original. And so I don't focus on, you know, anything else and who's reading my books and who's doing what. And I don't, I don't get involved in all that. I feel like, Um, more than an author, I, I, I see myself a little bit as an artist, and so I try to, I, I talk to my readers pretty much online and on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, but that's it. I don't really involve myself in ¿Y te llevas bien con la fama entonces? Uh, I don't really see myself as, I don't see it as fame. I don't see success as fame. I, I work for famous people. I, I work for Prince, and I... I work for, you know, Depeche Mode and The Cure and, you know, the Olsen Twins. So that's fame. You know, that's, I choose to be a writer. I choose to tell stories um, and write films and scripts. I have no desire to get attention for that. Okay. Good. I just want to continue to write more books. <laughs> that's my goal. Y yo espero que eso lo cumpla. Thank you. Yo espero. Y estoy seguro que aquí también. I, I, I want to. <laughs> A ver. Thank you. Más. Mm -hmm. Way in the back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's a game show. You won three dollars. <laughs> three pesos. <laughs> Hola. Bienvenida. Bueno, de parte del club. Thank you. Bienvenida. Um, Hi. Eh, mi pregunta es, eh, ¿qué sigue uh -huh. para ti después de um, esta saga? Que, ¿Qué vamos a ver de ti? Porque tenemos muchas ganas de verte. Um, uh, the Ghost Girl movie is shooting in the spring and I am executive producing that and then um, I'm finishing up the Blessed script and but the thing I'm really focused on is the, you know, is Featherbane for 2018. So hopefully I'll get to come back in 2018 with the Ghost Girl movie and a new book. And maybe a new Ghost Girl book. I don't know. I would love that. I see. That's up to my publisher. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Eso fue un spoiler. Was it? You... I don't know. It's up to the boss. <laughs> I would love to. I would love to see Charlotte do some more in this world. Yeah. ¿Tienes alguna idea que te gustaría hacer? I do, yeah. ¿Y puedes contarlo? ¿Puedes compartir con nosotros? ¿No? Yes. Hola. Hi. No ve. Las películas cambian cierto, como todo el libro de repente, título, uh -huh. 
y creo que muchos esperamos ver The Ghost Girl en una película como más enfocada si estás tú dirigiendo o estás de este lado de producción. Eh, ¿Nos puedes decir algo así si vas uh -huh. a respetar esta parte del libro? Uh, yeah, I mean, I hope so. It, ultimately, it's up to Matthew Vaughn and the director, but um, I, I am very happy with the way it's going. Let's put it that way. It's, it's a very stylized, artful um, film. So um, it's, 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 they're looking, you know, I mean, the scouting is amazing. The, the abandoned houses and Hawthorne Manor, it's, it's really amazing. So Um, you know, I'm not making the film, so, but I, I'm really happy with how it's going. Yeah. ¿Y tú escribiste el guión de la película? No, I didn't write the script. Honey Ross wrote it. Um, she is the daughter of Jane Goldman, who wrote X-Men and Miss Peregrine, and um, so it's all in the in this the creative family. little family. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I went, I, I had, a, I had, I, did write the script. It was options. I wrote the books and I wanted someone else to bring, you know, some freshness to it with yes. staying true to the books and the story, which Honey was a fan of. So, and I love her name, Honey. Right. <laughs> How cool is that? She is really cool. So, yeah. A ver, otra pregunta. Uh, can we do two? Um, Not working? Hay un micrófono que no, que no quiso nunca. Este. Este. Bueno, regresando, regresando al tema de la muerte, eh, yo tengo, uh -huh. siempre he tenido una duda muy grande acerca de ti, y es el, ¿cómo te gustaría a ti ser recordada? Porque obviamente todos algún día vamos a morir, esperemos que sea en muchos años, uh -huh. pero Spoiler cuando, alert. Eso pasar, cuando eso llegue a pasar, We're a all ti, gonna die. ¿cómo te gustaría ser recordada? Y en el momento en el que se estén despidiendo de ti, la, tu familia, la gente, o sea, ¿cómo te gustaría que fuera ese momento? Wow. Wow. Um, I I am obsessed with death. I have been thinking about my death since I was a young child. Um, and that's probably why I write the books I write. It's why I have a museum of death in New York. Uh, I'm trying to come to terms with it. Um, it's uh. I don't, I, I, I mean, I, I feel like the reason why I wrote Ghost Girl was that we all want to be remembered for something. You know, we all want that, uh, that we all, we all need that to know that we're going to be remembered. And that is why I was, I'm so obsessed with Day of the Dead, because um, that whole tradition of bringing the dead's favorite food and, and remember, they have their own day, you know, their own special day every year that you um, put aside for just them. Um, So I, I, I don't know how I'd like to be remembered. I'd like to be remembered as a, a person that maybe helped other people, that helped other people and that created some things in this world that, um, that, that created work that will be remembered. And that I tried really hard. And a good mom. <laughs> <laughs> Buenas tardes. Hi. Mi pregunta es, si no fueras uh -huh. escritora, ¿qué te gustaría hacer? No sé, estrella de rock, uh -huh. presidente, algo. Funeral director. Oh. <laughs> I, my aunt, I come from a family of morticians, so. <laughs> Tú tendrías que haber escrito Six Feet Under, la serie. You know, I had a that was so similar to that two years that made Sundance before that. And I want that to be my next book because I've just, I've been writing it for like so many years. It's, it's wow. the most important thing to me. So I just, I'm so afraid to put it out in the world though, because I love it so much. But maybe I will. No, yo quiero leerlo. <laughs> y estoy seguro que muchos aquí también. Thank you, love you so much. 
you write it with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love Alan Ball. I love him. Es que no me cabe la menor duda. Es fabuloso. You know, I just went when I was at Comic Con. I went through uh, the haunted house there, which I hate haunted houses. Uh -huh. With um, Brian Fuller, who was sí. cannibal and mm -hmm. you know pushing daisies. I didn't know who he was, and I was holding his hand the whole time and crying. <laughs> Es una rockstar, ella. I hate haunted houses. Do you like haunted houses? Do you no. have haunted houses? Why would you want to put your body? In no sé. No, a mí no me pregunte. Yo. You want to put yourself through that terror? I don't get it. Okay, sorry. Este, volviendo al tema de, de tu libro que, que tendremos en el 2018. Yo quiero saber si va a ser un solo uh -huh. o si va a ser Sara. Por favor, di que va a ser Sara. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know yet. I mean, I just, I'm on the second draft of the first book. Um, and I'm working on the art right now. So, um, it's a very dark, uh, magical fairy tale. It's something I've always wanted to write. In, in the vein of kind of Neil Gaiman kind of writing. So, um, I I uh I don't know if it I don't know is my answer. Yo tengo una pregunta, perdón, pero ya que estoy aquí sentado. Yeah. A estas alturas de leerte, de escucharte y de conversar contigo, me queda clarísimo cómo son las mujeres que tú admiras. Me gustaría saber cómo son mm -hmm. los hombres que tú admiras. ¿Cuál es? You. <laughs> no, I love, I love, um, you know, I love Tim Burton. I just, um, I just got to meet him again, and uh, I, I'm a fan and uh, of, of him as a person and as an artist. Um, I, I love Neil Gaiman. I love who else? I, I love, I love men. <laughs> ¿Y, tienes, y tienes un hombre ideal, como si pudieras hacer un Frankenstein de, de distintos pedazos de distintos hombres que admiras. I, I'm a fan of Frankenstein. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I sense of humor. I, I'm friends with lots of comedians, lots of comedic actors. Um, I think that's probably, I, and they're very dark people in private. So I think we, <laughs> we really get along. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Nos quedan probably cinco minutos. Humor. Así que tenemos tiempo para yeah. una pregunta. Just okay. one more question. You keep saying that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hola, eh, yo quiero Hi. preguntar. Bueno, sabemos que visitaste eh, un lugar donde se festeja mucho el Día de Muertos. Y yo quiero preguntar si tú crees que en el Día mm -hmm. de Muertos realmente nos visitan pues, nuestros familiares o con nosotros. Mm. Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I feel it's just important what you believe. It's not important what I believe. I, I just, it's such a beautiful, beautiful thing to witness. I felt, I felt like it was the biggest gift other than having my daughter, the biggest gift I was ever able to see, really. The outpouring of love and emotion and the dedication, it moved me beyond words. Bueno, y vamos a hacer una especie de bonus track ya que a Tona le gusta tanto la música, te, vamos a hacer dos preguntas más. Okay. Just more two questions. Okay. That's a bonus track. Nice. I love uh, B-side bonus tracks. Yes. Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian next. Mi pregunta es, volviendo con la muerte, es, ¿cómo te gustaría que morir? Porque pues... Um, yeah, I don't think I'd like to die anyway. Um, oh, that podría ser dormir en su cama. I, sleep, sleeping. sleeping. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to know that I'm dying. No, no, no gummy bears involved. What? No gummy bears involved. No, no choking, no candy. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> nothing that I do to my characters. I, I nothing. ¿No era Sebastián? Oh, ah, yeah. ya. ¿Quién es Sebastián a todo esto? Ah. Hi. Hi. 
Um, wouldn't you like Tim Burton to direct the Ghost Girl movie? Wouldn't you like Tim Burton to direct the Ghost Girl movie? And do you find yourself uh, she, like... You're in Spanish. Oh. Ah, que si le gustaría que Tim Burton... Oh, I can't hear. I was listening to you. Sorry, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, wouldn't you like Tim Burton to direct the Ghost Girl movie? And do you, uh, you know, yourself... I know he he likes the books, and he said so. So, but but no, I the Tim Burton is um, is one one of my favorite directors, and you know would be an honor. But I really feel like having it in Dexter Fletcher's hands and this different kind of you know this different feel to it. It's it would be predictable if if Tim Burton did it. Um, I think. I think it's going to be really cool. I think you'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> and do you find yourself writing something else in books? I mean, like poetry, music, maybe? Do I find myself writing? Sorry. Yeah, like uh, that is at uh, some point of your life, do you find yourself writing poetry or music? Oh, yeah. Or... I, I write songs and poetry. Really? And I wrote the, you know, what Ghost Girl Loves Sick for the trailer. And um, yeah, I love writing all sorts of things. Ya, bueno, yep. se fueron las dos preguntas. Eh, primero que todo, quisiera agradecer la asistencia, las preguntas, el entusiasmo, so los gritos. <laughs> y por favor, un aplauso gigante para Tony. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. It was so great seeing you. <laughs> Y ahora los invitamos a todos al stand de Penguin Random House, porque Tony va a estar ahí firmando de una a dos de la tarde. Así que corran para que se pongan a la fila.